butters, cries, and a dark shadow falls over this troll. From the ashes of a once great fandom has risen a meme, an LOL that must be liked. We look to the airways for a vindicator, someone to strike fear in the dark basement of the parents who created him. The battle between fan and smirk has begun. With a head on his shoulders stands the smirk fan, a speaker of truths, with a voice of silence, and a radio show of justice. This is Ring Rust. From an album that was, I have to assume, not named after the WWE's quite possibly worst and shortest lived stable ever, The Union. Remember that? What was it? Mick Foley, Test, Ken Shamrock, and The Big Show, all carrying two by fours for some reason, for about two weeks. And then. <laughs> that was Glorious Sons with Heavy, which is the theme song from. Battleground this past Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. From the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis, Missouri. I myself took it in down at the, the local movie theater. If you follow, if you uh, check out the hashtag Cineplex City on Twitter or possibly also Facebook. Did I put it on Facebook? I probably put it on Facebook. Anyway, put, just check out the hashtag Cineplex City. You'll see my review of Battleground from this past Sunday. I had a good time. The other members of the WWE Universe from this local area had a good time, and it was a dandy show. It wasn't great, but it, you know, it was a nicely paced show and well done, and I don't think anybody got hurt. Not that I recall hearing, anyway, so... And they did add a match. They added a Divas match, and boy, did they add a Divas match. But more on that a little later. Certain things off is from the pre-show. King Barrett defeated our truth Ron Killings. Uh, King What's Up, he calls himself, I think, to defend Barrett's King of the Ring crown. I'm not sure what would have... Well, it would have been like Hacksaw Jim Duggan winning Harley Race's crown, I guess. He would have been our truth with a crown. It's like Hacksaw Jim Duggan was Hacksaw Jim Duggan with a crown and a cape. And, well, it's one way to get on the cover of WWF Magazine, I suppose, if you remember that particular issue. And I quote... Check out the TMZ of Professional Wrestling News. And I quote on Facebook. All the latest news with some attitude, new and classic wrestling videos, and so much more. Can I have your attention, please? I just received an email from the Raw General Manager. Batteries not included. This is Fabio Mark Chabroni. You're listening to Ring Rustone, not three point five CHMR FM. So back to the uh, battleground review from this past Sunday on the WWE Network or on pay per view. If you chose to spend a lot more money, why you should spend more money? I guess you have more money than I do because you don't want the WWE Network, and that's great value. I don't know. I've seen a lot of people still complaining. It's like I don't want to hear any of this bull about. WWE.com free month for the WWE Network. Some people just don't want it. You know, there's there's no real help in someone who doesn't want to take full advantage of something that's practically being given to you. They want to actually take it. They want to actually take something. They want to steal from this multi-billion dollar company because they think stealing it is going to make some sort of statement that WWE is 100% not paying attention to. I can pretty much guarantee WWE is not paying attention to the fact that you aren't paying for that pay-per-view. If they were paying attention to it, you might be behind bars. There's a reason it's called illegal. Do you really want WWE to pay attention to you? I can't justify paying for a pay-per-view. Well, you can't justify watching it either, really. You can't honestly justify having to watch something. That's, you know, just because it's free. Well, I'm a wrestling fan. Well, act like a wrestling fan. WWE Network is for wrestling fans. Nine ninety nine a month. 
You just want to steal. Just, there's really no other way of, there's, there's no other way of seeing it. Get, be honest with yourself. You just want to steal pay-per-views. So, you want to sit by yourself in your bedroom or your office or your basement or wherever it is that you watch pay-per-views by yourself on streams and crossing your fingers for the whole three hours that the stream's gonna hold. Uh, oh, but I usually get good streams. Yeah, you steal them from the source. I guess. You steal them from the source that steals them from the really good quality. Anyway, so on to the main pay-per-view. Enough of that little rant. Randy Orton defeated Sheamus in a singles match about 17 minutes. Match one, Randy Orton defeats Sheamus. The Viper came out on top of this battle against the future mutant strongman, in brackets, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Half Shell, in theaters, June 3rd, 2016. Mick Foley, Cheap Pop. In a match that I didn't really see much potential for, but found myself pleasantly surprised by the execution. Wonder how long Wharton's going to be a baby kisser this time around? It doesn't really suit him, in my opinion, is all, so... In uh, my opinion. It's your opinion, you can't justify paying for pay-per-view, so it's my opinion, he's not a very good baby... Well, not that he's not a very good baby face, he just seems to be better suited for the Snidely Whiplash role than the Dudley Do-Right role. Source for Wrestling News Radio. You're listening to Siege Jamar 93.5. This is Sam Warwick Jeroni. You're listening to Ring Rust on 93.5 Siege Jamar FM. So the next match we have for, I should probably also be telling you, who I said was going to win, who I predicted was going to win. I did predict that King Barrett would uh, deten- defend, retain, whatever, his crown. And I predicted Sheamus... Anyway, so the next match I think was quite possibly the most entertaining match I saw of the night. That and surprisingly the Divas match, but we'll get this one first. The uh, primetime players successfully defend the WWE Tag Team Championships against the New Day. Darren Young and Titus O'Neil retained their rather ugly titles against Big E Langston and Kofi Kingston, but Xavier Woods was naturally stealing the show with his running commentary, and he wasn't even on commentary. At one point he was actually running, I think. So was running common. Terry. Who, hashtag worst suplex ever. Hashtag tricep meet. A match featuring these wrestlers usually ends up being an entertaining bout to me, uh, one way or the other. The real news, however, was how the champs were apparently pulled over with Mark Henry by police while traveling from St. Louis, Missouri. Titus O'Neill posted footage on his Instagram of himself, Mark Henry, and Darren Young being pulled over by police after leaving Sunday's Battleground. So if you're popping over to... Does it give the... Yes, Titus O'Neil WWE is his Instagram ID. So apparently none of them had any kind of record, so that's a good thing. If you go back a few years, though, I think uh, Mark Henry might have been smuggling plums. This is the Native Americans are talking. You're listening to the only alternative radio station, 93.5 CHMR. Don't miss it. Well, you heard him. Oh, Baba Tuna. Oh, won't you cry for me? I come from somewhere in Ontario with now having a baby on her knee. This is my boy Mark Jabroni. You are listening to Ring Rust on Not a 3.5. See, Jamar Femme, she's still a baby. I don't know. I haven't really checked lately. So, match three from Battleground from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Saw Bray Wyatt beating Br- Roman Reigns to a pulp. Uh, during my preview for the event, which you can uh, check out on my YouTube channel, I predicted that the former Husky Harris would come out on top of this, uh, the former Le- Leaky who was known as in, in uh, FCW, but never my wildest dreams did I expect such a smacktastic affair as this. I was riveted, but not so much so that I couldn't speculate on whether Roman called a Samoan drop a drop. Because, see, he's Samoan. What does Samoan call his Samoan drop a Samoan drop? Or just... Inquiring minds want to know, uh, returning Luke Harper back to the White family uh, fold, and it made for an intriguing con- conclusion to the match leading me to wonder if Eric Rowan will be far behind. 
And since you know I played Bray Wyatt's traditional theme song last week, and I just played a song that's kind of Bray Wyatt like, and the song in Alanis Moore says it's backed up by Sexual Chocolate, and I just played Sexual Chocolate before that for Mark Henry. I'm on fire, and this fire burns. This is a great chance to die, Slam and wrestling news radio on Green Rust, CHMOR 93.5 FM. <laughs> I'm Robbie. And you're listening to 93.5 CHMR FM. When I was a kid, if someone brandished a shrink gun, he'd get a little bit of respect. Zombie guards, seize him! Tell me that's not fun to say. If you're listening to Wrestling Superstar, the Triple X Sex Express Sexy Eddie, and you're listening to Rick Rust. The one and only wrestling talk radio show. This is Fanboy Mark Tabroni. You are listening to Ring Rust on 93.5. Uh, it's Adrian Murphy. So next up, the hashtag Divas Revolution Triple Threat Match. WWE serious about how they're apparently taking the Divas Division seriously, as was seriously revealed on Raw last week seriously. NXT Divas Charlotte and Becky Lynch joined their women's champion, uh, uh, Sasha Banks, when they all invaded Team Bella's party, getting all up in the grills of Divas champion Nikki Bella, her sister Brie, and their pet Alicia Fox. Charlotte and Becky joined Paige, while Sasha joined Tamina, Snuka, and Naomi, all facing down the dominant Divas, much to the crowd's delight. Fast forward to Battleground, where Stephanie McMahon schedules a triple threat match, pitting a member of each team against each other. The daughter of WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair came out on top of the NXT Women's Champion and the sister of the WWE Divas Champion, making it clear that WWE wants to do something more with the Divas. Or at least wants the WWE Universe to think so. Charlotte bears a strong resemblance to her father, which disturbs me somewhat. Like me on Facebook, tinyearl.com slash ringrust. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Gibroni. And subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Gibroni. This is 93.5 CHMR FM. Hey, Jive Soul Bro, you're listening to Ring Rust on C. Shabarin 93.5 FM. Well, I met this lady and I told her quite a story, said I love her forevermore. But the trouble is I tell the same old story to every girl that walks through the door. This is the sex dog talking at your money. Uh, match number five, uh, John Cena defeats Kevin Owens. Dr. Thugonomics successfully defended his U WWE United States Championship against the man who's been a thorn in his side for the past month, man who himself just recently lost his own NXT Championship to Finn Balor. Uh, during WWE Beast in the East, the company's recent live show for Japan, broadcast on the WWE Network and recapped on my YouTube page. The smart money was on the former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion capturing his first main roster gold, but that wasn't to be as his own mockery of Cena's attitude adjustment and STF was turned against him, causing him to lose by submission. But this war isn't over, friends, I assure you. And finally, the main event, a no contest for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I predicted the champion Seth Rollins would weasel his way into a successful title defense, or at least that he wouldn't lose the title via whatever means necessary, count out or disqualification most likely. But WWE was dead set on surprising me, apparently. Present was the multiple suplexes on the part of Brock Lesnar. Also on display, the fine facial follies of the one behind the one in 21 and 1, Paul Heyman. But the real kicker was a surprise appearance by The Undertaker beating down the most recent former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, as only a fighting grandpa can, leaving the main event a no contest. Bit of a bummer of an ending, but a hell of a visual nonetheless. Stand back! 
There's a hurricane coming through. Once a mild-mannered wrestling fan, one fateful day he was given the sacred fanboy mask. And now he's Atlantic Canada's only source of wrestling news. Fanboy Mark Jabroni, host of Ring Rust on CHMR 93.5 FM. Ring of Honor Wrestling presents the death of Before Dishonored 13 on iPay-Per-View. Tonight, uh, from William J. Myers Pavilion at 4300 West Bay Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, doors open at 7 and 8 p.m. bell time. And we have uh, seven matches here, so let's just start at what's presumably going to be the bottom of the card. The, t- the opening match, presumably. I don't know. I don't know if this is the order they're going to do them in, but this is the order they seem to have them presented in. So, Will Ferreira will be taking on uh, last real man, Silas Young. Now, I haven't been keeping up with Ring of Honor, so I'm going to predict that the guy whose name I know is going to win. So, I predict Silas Young. What a jolly good show. You're listening to Ring on CHR 93.5 FM. Hip, hip, and ten ho. This is Chris Jericho of Fozzie in the sea beast of Canada, and you're listening to 93.5 right here. No! Oh, moving! Ow! Oh, pointy! You slimy! Woohoo! <laughs> Marge, it takes two to lie, one to lie, and one to listen. What does that mean? Dutch, and you are listening to Ring Rust on CHMR 93.5 FM. So uh, let's get back to the uh, Ring of Honor uh, Death Before Dishonor 13 uh, preview. So there's a grudge match which sees Moose with Stokey Hathaway in his corner, taking on Cedric Alexander with Veda Scott in his corner. And the first time match, Adam Cole will be taking on Dalton Castle with the boys. So once again, the person I know, I'm predicting is going to win. And Cedric Alexander I know from the previous match. So, and Adam Cole. So... You're listening to Atlantic Canada's only source of wrestling news radio. Bring Rust. HMR 93.5 FM. Weirdo. This is Fanboy Mark Gironi. You're listening to Ring Rust on 93.5 HMR FM. No disqualification match. We'll see ACH taking on Adam Page. And first time ever, we'll see the Briscoes taking on RPG Vice, which is Rocky Romero and uh, Beretta. Now, once again, the name I know, the Briscoes, I'll predict a win. And ACH, again, I don't know who Adam Page is. I haven't been following Ring of Honor. I should be, but I just haven't really had the time to. I foresee I'm going to have more time now because I don't actually have cable anymore. So I'm probably going to have more time now. Like me on Facebook, tinyearl.com slash ringrust. Follow me on Twitter, at Mark Jabroni. And subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Jabroni. And the final two matches for Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor 13... Sees a four corners tag team titles match. The Addiction, the Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, taking on War Machine, which is Ray Rowe and Henson. Bop. Taking on Red Dragon, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. And The Kingdom, 
which hasn't really doesn't really specify which two of the three members will be wrestling. So I didn't really see fit to put in which of the two of the three put we're going to be wrestling. And finally, the main event, the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion Jay Lethal will be defending his title against Roderick Strong. I foresee a title, a successful title defense, probably for both. That's it for another show, kiddies. Check me out on Facebook, where you can keep track of all the news that's right on the mark, from around ringside to the latest concerts. See you at the shows. Later days. This is 93.5 CHMR-FM.